Oh, it looks terrible. Shame on you, Hasbro. Shame on you. Obviously, this was built under the those fucking kids, I'll buy anything clause. Oh, yes. oh, I should say it first off. Warning, warning. Chris might say an opinion you might not like because, well, you're obsessed with Fortnite or some other game franchise that, no, nah, this doesn't look anything like the Scar. I was thinking the Scar would look something like this, but with the vent holes on top here. Um, and would have this side prime thing here, but then we would take this over here and we would put like an integrated shotgun grip on it. That's how I would design the scar. But then again, I would use long shot internals too. But as I would, you could adapt it for flywheel. You know, put a flywheel, uh, like one, two, three flywheels here, and then make it like full auto. Yeah, I mean, that would be the caliber of a scar, really. I mean, think about it. But how do I know about designing anything? <laughs> I don't know at all, do I? Not a damn, damn thing. Well, anyway, this is Chris Cartea, and welcome to Nerf News the Hour Edge. Episode 28, and this is your, your host, of course, <laughs> Chris Cardia. <laughs> and this is going to be an interesting week. I know I'm a few days behind because I had just a lot of stuff to do. But uh, it's going to be an interesting week because I got a lot of very interesting things sh to show you today. That uh, there's one other thing that's really bothering me. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you that next. You guys read that? You guys do that brace server? For the new long strike. $69 pre-order from Amazon. $69. Sure, it comes with three eighteens. Sure, they're clear. I'm sorry, uh, three sixes, excuse me. 18 rounds total. Um, sure, they're clear. Sure, they're the same ones the Raptor Strike uses. They don't even put the scoop in the right place. Good God. Um, sure, it's the Elite version of the, um, well, modulus Elite version of the, uh, of the Long Strike, but God damn. That much? I'm not saying that I won't pay that much for a blaster. But I'm talking a blaster shoots Stefan, shoots far away. A blaster that has like, you know, brushless 180s or 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 or, or, or vamp motors in there. Um a pigeon, for example, 125 bucks for the pigeon kit, dude, worth it. Hundred bucks for the Jupiter kit, worth it. But we, you guys just crossing the line. Sixty-nine dollars, what the shit? For this thing? This should be like 40 bucks or 50 bucks. 40. I'd say 45. 45 bucks. Okay. It's just too much. So you're going to add the, the gay little tripod, a couple magazines, and a scope, uh, replacing it with that other sight thing that they had. And you were going to charge like way more. I mean, I don't know. It's just when, whenever Hasbro's been reissued. So this year, it's been a bad year. I'll tell you why. One, all the repaints. And even like, and I'll go through it later. Even like the uh, quarterly reports for Hasbro, you know, they're 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 down. They're down this year, okay. Um, and I, I can tell you one of the reasons why is one repaints and two the stuff that people do want they're charging through the nose for. I mean, okay, the Pyragon, for example, what is it, fifty nine dollars? I think the original Pyragon was forty, and it was forty dollars back in two thousand twelve. Okay, it's two thousand eighteen now. It's sixty bucks. Give me a break. I understand a little inflation. Okay. Maybe it should be 45. Maybe it should be 50. Okay. All right. Yeah. Or, you know, I get that. But no freaking way should it be $60. That's what made the whole VTX line just too expensive. So they're doing that. And they're, and on, on top of repainting, which it, this is not just to repaint. They actually did redo the internals. They're charging uh, ungodly amounts of money. No one's going to pay $69 for this. When you can just go out and get like a long shot for $30, $35. Even though, you know, you can get a long straight long shot. I, I, dude, freak, man. You know? The hell? You can get one of these. You know, or you can find them in a thrift store or whatever. $69? And I mean... Let's put it this way: the firing system. It's it's like the the Accu Trooper fire system. Um, the Accu, um, no, the Razor Strike. The Razor Strike firing system. Okay, it's not any different. You got the longer barrel, and it's not very much different. Why is it sixty nine dollars? Now, you know what? Yeah. So this is like really, really, you know, really, yeah. It's just not worth that money. It's not like you guys designed a brand spanking new blaster from scratch or anything. Really now. Really. So I like the fact that Evan Butler, 
on Evan B's uh, Facebook uh, channel. Yeah. They said it. Right here. They put it all down. Hasbro reports third quarter 2018 financial results. Third quarter revenue is a $1.57 billion. U.S. and Canada segments down 7%. International segment revenues down 24%. Entertainment license re revenues up 45%. Okay, so their licensing is up, but the, but but the but the total revenues is just down. It's down. Okay, operating margin of twenty percent versus twenty point point one percent. Yes, that's not very much, but put in mind that that twenty percent is multiplied by uh, down by those numbers as well, and it is uh, start of the J curve down. The next quarter you could see sixteen percent, or fifteen percent, or fourteen percent. Okay, it's just. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, so the numbers are there. The numbers have spoken. This strategy, the, the, those fucking kids, they'll buy anything, uh, clause that they seem to be using lately. Yeah. But you know, they have done some, some good things. I mean, you know, good things. Yeah. I mean, I won an HVZ with two of these and a, and a Mauser fire. And that's pretty good. You know? Uh, they made a nice good blaster, a nice good pistol. I, I, some of the new stuff they're doing is good. It's just that they're just getting lazy with the repaints, things like that. And then they're charging a fortune for this long strike. Ugh, you know. Uh, another thing I should say um, real quick about the uh, Fortnite uh, Scar. Okay, so Fortnite Scar is $49.99. Okay, flywheel, although they don't know if it's going to be a, um, a full auto or semi-auto. Uh, what the phone published this part of, of, of the Fortnite uh, rifle. And then Gavin Fuzzy po posted the other one from Singapore. No, she posted the other, the other picture. Um, well, first off, flywheel, drag, 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 right out the barrel. One. Number two, it's not, it looks terrible. I mean, it looks like some corny Disney Toontown prop, but worse. Seriously, I, I would see this hanging around Toontown in Disneyland or something. I mean, I understand Fortnite is an animated game, mind you, but their blasters are supposed to be somewhat realistic. Now, this becomes a real problem designing because you want things to not look real like that. Okay, which is why this is black and, I mean, sorry, this is blue and gold. Okay, even with a scope on it, um, you know, Sheriff rolls around and says, oh, what is that? It has an orange tip, but it has a scope, but it looks like a toy. And I like that. I got that. The actual Sheriff drove around on his off hours. I was at a park and the Sheriff of Santa Clarita said, hey, this looks like a toy. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, well, what, what does it shoot? Oh, darts. Okay. All right, just don't shoot at anybody. You're fine. And I thought that that was really cool, you know, that even like a Zeus designed by Explorer, uh, the original tan color looks a little bit like a rifle. It's got a black barrel on it. It's got a 3 by 940 Hey, it still looks like a toy. So that fine line of making things look like a toy and looking real, I understand that. And that's hard to do for a designer, but they have clearly failed in this blaster. Eh. It is Flywheel. I was hoping it would be like a long shot. Let me tell you why. It's not that I don't like Flywheel Blasters entirely. It's that I don't think this design was appropriate for a Flywheel Blaster. Because it's a longer barrel. Okay. I can easily put a plunger tube here and back here. You see how this is right here? I can put a plunger tube here. I could put my plunger tube all the way back here. I could put my catch mechanism back here. I can put uh, my breech here. I could put a barrel going all the way out there. It would be great, you know? Well, what does that sound like? Yeah, you got it. Long shot. But, you know, I'll give you one more. One more thing that might have been good for this blaster. How about a stampede reissue? That would have been cool if they made this like a stampy instead of a flywheel. Which we already know as it's a flywheel because you can see the rev trigger around there. It would have been so cool, but no. We're going to put this corny, kmart looking thing together and I say that word thing together and we're just gonna make it look like shit. Uh. 
which like the last flywheel blaster I bought, which was the uh, the the uh, the regulator, it's still sitting up there and doing box. It is. I'm not kidding. It's still sitting way back there behind my subwoofer. Yep, 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 it is. So at any rate, yeah, I got some more news this week. Let's go check it out. So sick and tired of these ads. It's it's okay. It's right before election. It's like two weeks before election. November sixth is election. And I'm gonna, this is what I hate about this time of the year. Ugly politicians and ads. Just ads. And you know, the ones that put up the most ads are the ones that most are being funded to put up the ads. So it's like, I voted. Did I vote? Yep, I voted. I have an absentee ballot and I voted. Okay, but I wanted to show you, while I was doing that, I wanted to, to comment on that. I wanted to show you a friend of mine, Bradley Phillips, did a review for the FDL3. I got to see one of these in person at Ragnar Oktoberfest. They had a they had a exhibit and everything. Let's pause it right here, okay? Very nicely put together, very well done. The electronics let you select rate of fire, speed, everything. But is it accurate? So he did this uh, video on is it accurate? Um and he saw that, okay, single shot wasn't very accurate, but multiple shots were accurate at 100 feet if you could if you could do, do like double tap, if you can do two at a time. Personally, uh, okay, okay. It, it, it's accurate if stationary target, sure. But you have to understand this. Targets move when you're in battle. I run into that all the time, shooting a bird of prey at somebody at like 180, 200, 210 feet, is by time... Because you're going slower and you can't go faster. By the time the dart leaves the barrel and hits the target, the target can move and, to, and often does. So a lot of times you have to do what's called a fault prediction, course prediction. And so the guy's running, you, you, you throw it way out there while he's running to intercept him. That's what you have to do a lot with um, with nerf darts. And believe me, with a single shotter, it's it's frustrating, but it teaches you discipline. It teaches you to shoot really well, okay? Um, so the problem with two shots, let me tell you what it is, is let's say you're firing two shots, one and two, okay? Um, let's make this jaw right here the target, okay? So you're firing this, the darts are flying over there, and whichever one hits, you see, it can be off. So if it's the second dart that hits, the the shooter's got more time to, to shoot. This is what's wrong with, with, with burst. Uh, if you're shooting like an AK-47, an AR-15, now burst fire is fine because it's right after each other and the, the bullets go in, you know, 3,100 feet per second. That's fine. But when you're talking about a nerf dart that's doing at most 170 feet per second, um, that's going to be really tough. I would like to see him do uh, this in battle. And I could be wrong. And as a matter of fact, I mean, like, the dart that would have missed could have hit him because it would have gone the path that he would have gone or maybe even corrected further. It would be really interesting to see an FDL-3 in battle. And stationary, I agree. Okay, you're firing multiple shots. you got more of a chance to hit it. That's why the military uses three-shot bursts. And not only that, but it conserves ammo. But the other thing is, Okay, nerf is slower. How well does a three-shot philosophy work, or two-shot philosophy work, in nerf and flywheel? So, Bradley, that's my next assignment for you. I, I think you should do that. And I could be wrong, but I'm just going by theory here. And I'm thinking, hmm, yeah. You know, having the uh, the three-round burst, uh, that second to last, if you're going three-round, the second to last or last shot might not hit, or two-round. If you're using a 22, that's 11 rounds. If you're using a three shot, that's less than eight rounds. Um, so, right. But you know, these people, they, they have tons of magazines on. I've seen people go into battle with, with like 12 magazines. I think the most I've seen is 20. 20 worker 22s. The guy looked like he was Mr. Magazine Man. Mr. Magazine Man, Mr. Magazine Man, do 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 do, Mr. Mag. I'm gonna hum that now. That's right, Mr. Magazine Man. But you know, he, it still was a very interesting video. That was my only thing I had to say about it. I do like the fact that the flywheels are right in the front here. No, no dead space, uh, no aerodynamic dead space up here. Um, but it does have one problem. One. Can I tell you what it is? 
is 3D printed. And I could take that for, let's say, Desert Pigeon, which is another really great blast that's coming out. Or the Jupiter, why they're small. You can take them out of your car, everything. But when I'm talking like a primary and I'm spending that kind of money, and I accidentally leave it in the car, and I have the same problem with the, with the caliber. It's 3D printed. It can melt. It's a great blaster on the field, yeah. Those, these things are awesome. Yes, they are. But it can get... It can melt like the Wicked Witch of the West. And, well, you know, if you've anybody seen Wizard of Oz, yeah, you got it. So I would really like to see... I mean, if they can get, if they can get the demand up for this... Make an injection molded and sell it at like uh, sporting goods stores and stuff because I, I really feel that there could be a market for it. Um, at right now, it's pretty good, and a lot of people don't mind 3D printing like I do. But even like Clowning Nerf from Broken Nerf, and he said it, he's like, you know, uh, 3D printing is fine, but then if you leave it in your car, and I'm the kind of person that sometimes will leave my blaster in the car after a war, dude, it happens. I'm the same way. I'm like, you know what? I could put a 3D printed mag on my Mauser Fire. I, I could. They're out. They're popular. Sure, but I don't. I use a jet a jet mag adapter. One, because it's easy just to buy the mag and the adapter at the same time. Just just do it, you know? Um, not I've only seen a few available right now, but you can do it. It's not that hard. And two, um, it doesn't warp. So if I fiber if I fiberglass it to this, it's going to stay uh it's going to stay dimensionally where I want it, you know? Um I kind of worry about that with the FDL and the caliber. And you know what? I, hey, maybe I'm wrong. A lot of people who have these go like, oh, no, this isn't a problem, you know. But I saw one of my teammates. He had to move everything from, like, his rear seat to the trunk. One time we were at Chick-fil-A and we were just eating, like, uh, dinner after a meet because he was worried that it would it would, it would would melt, you know. Yeah. Me, 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 me. Ever put, like a, like, a chocolate Easter bunny in the microwave and then just melt it? And it's like, <laughs> but he die. Yeah, seriously. But, uh, okay, I mean, it's not that bad, but you know what I mean. It's pretty bad. I mean, the California sun can be pretty cooker. Also, it depends on what part of the country you live, too. Some people, they don't even care. Because it doesn't get past, like, 70 degrees. You go to, like, England or something, it doesn't get past 70 degrees. You go to, like, Southern California, it could be 115 outside. Right. Last World Series, as a matter of fact, it was 103 outside. Let's see here. Kane Schlutstein. I don't know how to say your last name. Sorry. It's a tough one. Um, ordered a whole bunch of stuff from Light Tank. Like a ton of stuff, right? And they had a shipping calculator like they always do, okay? They had a shipping calculator. They said, okay, here it is. There you go, okay? And they, uh, and, and, and he paid it. He paid the amount of shipping. He paid everything. Right? Well, he was waiting for a month and they wouldn't ship his stuff. They wouldn't say anything. They wouldn't do anything. And then he finds out, oh, yeah, we miscalculated your shipping. Where you're going to have to pay $50, $50 more. Um, pardon me all the hell, he said. And said, well, no. You know, you guys made the mistake. You can either refund me the money and just never do business with me again. Just don't. Or you can ship me my package. You guys made a mistake. If your shipping calculator is off, that is not my fault. That is not my problem. Well, I'm having a feeling that this is we're going to run into a lot of these kind of problems with international shipping. Because we have international companies. They have different laws. They have different governments. They have different people. You know, and they're going to have different policies. A lot like this. And um, they're going to make a mistake. And they're not going to own up, own up to it. And they're used to people saying, okay, well, this law in this country says this. So, okay, I'll just pay you another $50 to ship all this stuff. Uh, if we're an American company uh, and they were to do this, uh, they would get called to the business, the Better Business Bureau like that. And they would get, like, the worst, worst rating there is. But, again, light take. Yeah. I, I'm not liking Light Take and uh, NF Strike all that much. I hear a lot of bad stuff, a lot of shenanigans, a lot of things. Uh, the time that NF Strike tried to sell you guys uh, fake artifact sleds, that's terrible. Okay. And now this, this issue with the shipping. Okay. This is not cool. Okay. Um, my favorite store, of course, um, Monkey Mods. Monkey Mods, who um, 
donated this prophecy to me, donated some barrels to me, donated some springs to me, some magazines, all sorts of stuff to get me into the kind of the worker universe. The great, great people. I will say that and, uh, they have, but I've also ordered from them. I've ordered darts from them. I got them no problem. I've ordered parts of them. I've got them no problem. Even before they 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 started sponsoring my channel, I didn't have a problem. Okay, and they're a good company. Uh, they, I, I've gotten to meet their owner. They're really great. And even though they're in Malaysia, um, put in mind, China, Malaysia, big freaking whoop. This DHL's going to ship it anyway, okay? Um, yeah, you know, it's no different. It's no different, okay? And the, the, I believe that they are more in tuned with the Malaysia Mahdi community, the Singapore Mahdi community, because they're closer to that community than China. And they, I don't think they'd ever pull something like this. Also, they're opening a new store. Um, a new um, offline store, a, a store in a shopping space. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to be covering that when they open it because that's great. That's really great. You know, that's really cool that to see somebody just go from mail order to store and to move it. But um, this, it is almost like extortion. It is. You know, you, you, you put in your package, you wait for like a month, and then they ask for $50 more. Ridiculous ridiculous okay just i know i got a lot of gripes today don't i i, I really do <laughs> yeah you can see it right here he's arching this is bradley he's arching the shot and he got nine hits and two misses double shotting it you know what i mean so just by by firing two and it has a nice programmable interface on it everything yeah it's pretty cool but i wanted to show you something else We're live, man. We are, we are live now. Yeah. Do you think if I shot you through this, it would actually hit you? What do you think? <laughs> I mean, That's I right. Um, Grog Nerfing is doing a, a series of interviews. He's got, you know, Clowny Nerf, Homely665, uh, uh, you know, Big Cousin Steve, and me. I, I've done an interview on here. Um, he put up an interview about me. It was interview number six. He's up to seven, and hopefully he gets up to a hundred or a thousand. I'm not just saying this news to viewers to watch uh, these interviews, because some of them are extremely interesting. I thought the one about Clowny Nerth and how he talked about a lot of his playing style and a lot of things like people being inaccurate, things like that, and his lifestyle with Nerf was, was very interesting. But I'm also saying this to Nerfers, uh, I think that this would be a great way to really speak your mind and get your exposure out and to talk to the community. I would love to see a Babalolo video or a Drac video. I would love to see a video about Coop 772. I would love to see a video about, you know, um, Kel Kenzie McElfish, dude. That'd be awesome, you know? I'd love to see that. I'd also like to see some Singapore modders also. So... I am putting this up to show you, not just to show you, hey, you know, watch my my interview, watch me be a silly asshole, as I always am a silly asshole. You don't know, I'm a nice guy, but I'm a silly asshole. Um, I'm also saying this to nervous. Hey, guys, we would love, I would love to see some interviews from you guys. I would love to see what the community uh, puts down. A long time ago, there was a um, series called Know Your Modder by Jay Nerf. Jay Nerf did this really great series about it, but, you know... Broke Nerfing just has this style, this funny way about him. Uh, he, he's got a funny channel. The latest video I saw, he was actually doing a video on his very first Boomco blaster. He got an M6, and he was just... <laughs> he was just goofing around. It was so funny, you know? Uh, he made a, a joke at the beginning about, about like... <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this picture. He said that there was a Nerf war the night before, and they put up all this stuff <laughs> just to be funny, you know. And and he used it as his background. Um, and Broke Nerfing just has a, a style, a funny style about him. Caliber. He's standing way back, way back, way back, way back. He's just being silly, man. Yeah. So this is what it's about. It's about having fun, having fun. And being cool. Now let me show you one other nerfer. One other nerfer who needs uh needs a mentor. I mean, my mentors were like Drac, Coop Seven Seven Two, uh, you know, Dennis Mackey, uh, Babalolo, 
all these guys that really knew how to present. And I knew I was never going to be these guys. I am just, you know, I in terms of videos, I'm like the Edward of Nerf. But this guy, yeah, you know, let me show you. This this channel is, um, let me get his name, is Matt Von Nerf. He's in the UK. He's actually, I, I think he talks in pretty good detail, but he needs to, I guess, liven it up a bit. And uh, he, he needs some encouragement, I think. Okay, so he's got this intro. Watch, watch this intro. Cool intro. The Rotor Fury is a uh, pump action, um, single shot or slam fire, um, shotgun style blaster. It takes the huge mega darts. Um, it contains one, well, it has one really long tactical rail across the top. I don't know why, but. Okay, I think you see my so point. Really I think you see my point. He's just a little too monotonic, a little too quiet. I, I I'm saying this knowing damn well that my first videos sucked. They were terrible. I had a lot of issues trying to find myself. I had a lot of issues with camera. I'm not a very good cameraman. I've never been a good cameraman, you know. But just like his video, hey, this one's sitting in one place. And I'm talking, and I'm acting like a complete asshole, and it's great, you know, it works. You just got to be like the same way, and 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 just you know, show what you're talking about, do what you're talking about, and just yeah. So um, I'd like you to check out his channel and leave him some comments, but be constructive, you know. Not everybody is going to be a firecracker all the time. I understand that, but at the same time. Um, you know, anybody remember Howard Stern when uh, he walked into a Detroit radio station and the DJ before him said, oh, looks like we got our new, uh, our new DJ. He looks something like Big Bird. Yeah, you know, and he was just, he was dry. He didn't have it. It's not until he, he finally learned to just let himself go and express himself that he really got into his own. And I, I, that's my advice for you, man. That's my advice for you. It's not that you're in Britain. No, mm -mm. you have an interesting enough channel, people will watch it. Look at UK Form Alliance. They, I got a good channel. They got good content. Yeah. And it's not just content and channel and explaining. It, it's it's life, you know. You got to be alive out there, you know. I mean, everybody knows I'm a live fucking wire. Look at me, you know. I've been known to drink and smoke on the air. I've done it. Why? Because I'm honest. Sure, has it cost me a few subscribers? Actually, it has in the past. But I don't care. It's honesty, you know. I want to be honest to my viewers. I want to be honest about who I am. And that's the other thing is that you're just starting out. You need to find these new things. There's new stuff. I definitely don't give up. I love that intro. I, I watched this video. I watched it. It was very detailed about the Roto Fury. It's a Roto Fury is a great blaster. But it just needs, like I said, just need to find that sparkle kit. And last but not least, we're seeing a lot of cool stuff. Pigeon kit. $125 by Mr. Heath Pants. Uh, you want a good backup pistol? That is that is that is rock and roll as soon as you pick it up, which I think I like the most about the Mr. Heath Pants um, kit the most is that it is rock and roll whenever you pick it up. Yeah, $125, Suns Guns, you got it, man. You got it, okay? And then we got, of course, uh, Pigeon. Pigeon's going for $100, it's Rival. Um, my friend of mine did a, um, did a review on it, uh, Wacom S7. Did an excellent review on it. Told us all about the pluses and minuses, how it works, how well it is. Um, he thinks it's a little bit too high to fire. You know, he thinks it's a little bit too much uh, in that realm. But he thinks it's a great pistol, and it is. It's great. Now, Jupiter, if you want to shoot rival and you want some good sidearm stuff, it's pretty damn cool. Yeah. These were not easy to get. Because so many people have been buying these things, and there's only so many that Out of Darts can put out at once, because yep. they're all 3D printed by him, that uh, <laughs> I actually had to get them to two separate The front packs. barrel, the, the tab on it rotates so you can adjust the accuracy. Um, it uses standard uh, standard Apollo and, and uh, Zeus mags, okay? And they're, they're really cool. But he was very honest about, okay, I can't holster it because it hits the rev trigger and stuff like that. Things that need to be done on it. 
Uh, or, I got one for you, Walcom. I got one for you. I know I couldn't quite build a Mauser Fire, and I, the thing is, you think 3D printing something all by yourself, try building all yourself. Oh, really tough. I mean, it takes me a long time to build pistols and stuff, and I have just back orders still. But I'll make you a deal. I'll make you a really good deal. Send me one of these, and I'll make you some holsters that won't jam the uh, the dark finger. And they're going to be duct tape magnetic holsters, okay? But I can guarantee you, just like my holsters, I can build these, and I can make it work. I can make them work with belt holsters. I can do it. So if you want to send me one of these, uh, with the with the intention uh, and the and the consent, of course, that I send it back when I'm done, and I can make you two of these. Mm hmm. Uh, left hand and right hand. Uh, go ahead and I'll do it. Just feature it on your show when you get it. And uh, I'll show you how it's done, man. I'll show you how it's done. It can be done. It just it takes it just takes looking at the blaster and saying, hmm, what could you do here? And even with a non uh, duct tape design, like all my holsters are duct tape. I think you guys you guys know that. That's a fire strike holster. I've had this holster since 2012. I've had this since my first HVZ. And this was the holster that had the blaster that took down 26 Zeds in one round. That's right. That's right. So I have a long history of doing this. Okay. Um, I can see other ways of doing it where making uh, a holster would be good. Okay. If you don't want me to do that, because I do have a really good idea, you want to make some mole thing made out of 3D printing. Okay, so tell Out of Darts to do this. You see these picking aerials? Jump and jump. Okay? What I would do is I would make it so you make a holster, 3D print around here, back here, has a hook behind there. Okay? And I would make it so it holds it by the front picking air rail. The front bottom picking air rail. Yeah. And then what I would do is I would print a hood that goes right here, touches the very front of the blaster right here. And by doing that, when you insert it, you have a limiter. Okay. You also have a limiter uh, on this front picking air rail and you have a limiter right here. So basically you have this piece that has these two pieces, has this one little, little slide notch for the 20 millimeter picking air rail. And then it has a thing on the back, like so, that hooks it. So, uh, Luke Goodman, also, if you want to talk to me, uh, I, I got a pretty good design for this. I'll let you just do it. It's no big deal. Just give me credit. Hey, Chris, help me come up with this design. Cool. You know, I do a lot of help with the community, um, helping people out with their designs and stuff like that. So, you guys want a good idea for a holster? Doesn't hit the rev trigger, and it's easy to, to and it's easy to quick draw. I got two ways of doing it. One, my way of doing it with the duct tape holsters and the neodymium uh, magnet class, and two, 3D printed by the rails and by the side there to hold it in. Which, of course, it does eliminate your bottom rail. Yes, it does. But it's a worthy sacrifice for having, you know, quick draw Jupiters. Uh, yes, I'm going to a war tomorrow. That is Manhattan Beach Nerf Club, 11 o'clock, Pollywog Park, 11 o'clock a.m. of course. Don't show up in there p.m. Uh, I don't even think you're supposed to be there after sunset. You'll get some kind of ticket or something, yeah. But, um, yeah, Pollywog Park, we're going to have lots of fun and blast each other. It's a super stock war, so don't bring anything crazy. And if you do, just show it off between rounds. You know, but I will be there. Uh, Skyler will be there. We will have tons of fun. And we will shoot up every, every one. So until next time, don't you go changing. Or I'll find you. Yeah.